A lot of people in their teenage and 20 years are really scared of networking because you don't know how to get started and you don't know how to craft these outreach messages. Hey everyone, I am Elena Yang. I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, and now I go to school in Boston. I go to Babson College and I started networking when I was 16. So today I'm just going to share my experience and walk you guys through the process of how I got started with networking and how I established around my first 10 connections. Because right now, based on the estimation, I have at least 200 primary and secondary people whom I can reach out to at any point But I believe that getting started is the hardest part So I'm just gonna share with you guys my experience when I first started crafting all these outreach messages and how I went about it I'm gonna keep it very simple I've broken everything down into three steps So it's really easy to understand and you guys can always let me know in the comment section If you guys have any questions or follow-ups feel free to ask me So let's get right into it a common piece of advice that people usually give is just like Oh, send them an outreach message or craft a template and then switch it up based on the person whom you're talking to, edit it a little and send it out. But I actually think that even before that, there could be more preparation that's gone into it for there to be a higher chance of getting a response from this person whom you've just done a cold outreach to. So I would actually interact with them on the platforms that they're posting on, whether that's Twitter or LinkedIn or even Instagram. I think a lot of people whom you would want to meet and speak to online do have an online presence and maybe you found them through these platforms. So if it's possible and if this person posts often, always comment down with some sort of a question or added values, added ideas to their posts. And people who are creators, they always read through their comment sections. So once you repeat this, for a small period of time, even if it's a week or two, and also do this with genuine intentions. It's not just about landing a 30 minute meeting with them at the end. Even just sharing your thoughts with them online through the comment section goes a long way for you as well. Because if you admire what they're posting, and now you're also able to add value to that post through your own words and your own ideas, I think it's a learning process for us as well. I remember during the initial days when I was on Twitter and when I just started posting, Twitter kind of sucked me into this algorithm with this small group of people whom are kind of like-minded and they would always just react to my post, they would like it, and originally I don't know who they are, but slowly and throughout time, once you see that profile photo and that username enough, then you'll start to pay attention of who's actually following you and who's actually within this small online circle. And so after you do this preparation and you warm up with this person, of that person at least knowing of your existence over the internet, then it's a lot easier to send that outreach message and for them to be like, oh, I do recognize this person and let me check out this person's profile. Which leads into my second point, is that if you establish your own online presence and personal branding, it is also easier for you to establish your credibility with someone else because when people are choosing who they want to contribute their time to and they would at least want to know a bit of this person's background so even with an outreach message sometimes people can still hold a pretty skeptical mindset but if they check out your profile you have an actual photo of yourself your face and you have a small bio of you a summary you have a few posts that adds to your credibility a lot. My third tip is that when you send the outreach message, there's actually a lot of skills and tips that also go into how you craft the message. I would say that professionalism, it's not really required if you're sending out this message on a social media platform, but if you are doing it through email, then you might want to go about it a little bit more professionally or at least have that structure. But I usually like to add a few emojis (laughs) to my outreach messages. And when I'm crafting it, I would also use some sort of casual words sometimes and just make it like a conversation. Pretend that you're introducing someone not in an elevator pitch setting, but in this housewarming party setting. That shows a lot of your personality already rather than just being like, hi, blah, blah, blah. My name is this, I am from here and I saw your post about this. Especially people who receive multiple outreach messages like these, they start to get bored of the same structure and that's why I switch it up based on that person and based on what type of personality I think they have and how they would easily understand and reciprocate to my sort of expression. But I don't even use a template. I usually just craft a really short 
but simple message to every single person that's 100% personalized. And I also want to make an emphasis on the fact that you want to keep it short as well as include a really clear actionable task for them to be like, for example, would you have 15 minutes next week so we can discuss this or I would really appreciate if you can help me out with that and what does your schedule look like within the next few weeks. You don't want to just leave it at, hey, I really like your post and would love to have a chat sometime. Just simply by saying, do you have time next week or do you have 15 minutes to chat about this? It adds a lot of clarifications for them to understand what they're getting themselves into and what they are signing up for. And that's what people want to see, again, when they're choosing to have a meeting with someone or when they choose to just ignore someone. And so having a very clear actionable task really, really helps to make it simple for the other person to say yes. I think initiative goes a long way when it comes to the initial cold messaging outreach. And that's what I remember during my early days. I was doing all the work. I was doing the initial outreach, as I just mentioned, after this person responds, oh yes, next week works. I would either ask for their calendly or I would provide a few times and time slots that I am available in. Also, I would do it in their time zone. For example, if I am in EST and they're in PST, which is three hours behind EST, I would talk about all of my availability in their time zone so it makes it so easy for them to just understand what her schedule looks like and to agree to have a meeting with me. Because when you're trying to ask for other people's time and value, you gotta really put in the work and the initiative. Also keep in mind that not every single time networking would be this much work, but I would say that during the initial stages is when you need to go the extra mile to get your initial group of network and at least get into a small circle of people whom would collectively know you and that's how you establish a network where you have a lot of people knowing of each other and you have a lot of mutuals with others. That's when your life gets a lot easier. But again, networking is a really long game. The first few times you do it, it's gonna be some work and there are gonna be some challenges. There's a lot of try and error going on, but ultimately it will be worth it when you can get on a call with someone who is not easily reachable, but you do get to reach out to them because you have these networking skills and you're able to learn with people who are further along in their professional or personal journeys. To repeat, the three simple steps that would elevate your personal outreach message compared to other people's is that first of all, you'd want to interact with them on their posts or add some sort of values and ideas to whatever they're posting over the internet so that they know of who you are. And second of all, have your own profile so that they also get to know a little bit more about you you. And third of all, you don't really have to be professional, but that message has to be personal enough as well as including a really clear outreach intention and including some actionable steps within your outreach message. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to comment it down below as I mentioned before and I'll be making an entire series of videos based on networking. These videos are sort of casual a lot of the times, but I'll also make some that are a little bit more formal than this. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.